when we started life, where in this city, I squatted in somebody's house. It was a hospital. We're living in the up floor. Robbers, robbers even came to meet us in that house. I was a squatter. Even though my wife never believes this, this other part, I want to tell you. But it happened. I used to cook. <laughs> oh, my lover. I was the youngest among all the doctors. Eh? They were married with children. I was young. So I used to cook. I'm the one that makes stew, <laughs> boy rice, fry plantain. I was a squatter. That kind of squatter that if they say, by 10, we don't lock door. You better be in that house before 10 o'clock. They will lock you outside. I was a squatter. When I got married, we paid for a place where the rent was 240,000. 240,000. Two rooms. Three rooms. For six months or so, I was fetching water from the well. Hey! Not 1925. Oh. 2019. Eh? Six, six months. Is it 19? 2009. Sorry. The brother shout, no. <laughs> it's even though you get anointing, enough will be 2000. 2009. I was six months. The landlord promised that he would do the borehole. We fetched water from the well. Six months. My parlor, there was no chair there. When my wife finished cooking food, no dining table. You know this, the way this place is. In fact, this was the color of the tiles in my parlor. <laughs> right? We we'll sit down like this. You know, from the dining to the parlor, there was a step like this. So we'll sit down. We'll put the food here. Eh? Like dining table. Then we'll sit down here. In those days, I was under the covenant that I must eat with my wife. I've been liberated now. <laughs> so we'll sit down and we'll eat there. Not once did we go to God to say, why are you doing us like this? Because there's nothing wrong with starting small. He says, though your beginning be small. Small doesn't mean it is terrible. Small just means it's a beginning point. Even though your beginning be small, he says your end shall be exceedingly great. But you see, we are raising a generation of people that don't want to start small. You know why? It's a matter of perspective. What will people say? What will they say? 14 years after, you cannot compare me to where I'm coming from. 14 years after. You cannot put me in that picture. And the reason that is possible is my trust absolutely is in God. Absolutely. Because my priorities, as you are seeing Kesena here, my priorities is in the realm where God dwells. My wife used to say it now that if you have money in that account, give it to me. Because if, I, if there's money there, it will go to project. So, so they want to buy land now. And then I'll be storing money. No, no, it doesn't work like that. I've grown to the point where God can meet me in the night and tell me that thing is for that brother. That's how he makes up my brother for those who will never be wealthy. He will raise people within the body that will bear their body. Because Jesus was the one that said with his own voice, the poor will always what? Be amongst them. They will always be there. But how will they survive? He now puts a system in place. Are we together to that point? So parable number one. Luke chapter 12. And verse 13. Are you getting blessed? 
Luke chapter 12 and verse 13. Luke chapter 12 and verse 13. Go back to New King James, please. Luke chapter 12 and verse 13. Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Next verse. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? Okay, we'll deal with that next week. Next verse. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of what? I can't hear you. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Next verse. Then he spoke a parable to them saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be what? Next verse. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose? Will those things be which you have provided? 21. So is he who lays up treasure for who? And is not. I want to show you God's technology for financial prosperity from this parable. Now, listen to me, brethren. There are basically two ways. We are coming back to the story. Just stay with me. There are basically two ways, if you study scripture, by which God prospers his saints. Two ways. The first way is through what we call wealth transfer. Somebody say wealth transfer. Now, I have read through the scriptures carefully and I invite you to do the same. And I've tried to look up articles, researches on the way um, um, wealth transfer has been taught over the years. And you see, what I want to help you do is see it from God's perspective, not my opinion, God's perspective. What is wealth transfer? Wealth basically is when you have the abundance of material um, goods, and uh, it's financial prosperity basically. But when you say transfer, what do you mean by transfer? Transfer is just to move from one location to the other. Are you with me? So if you are transferring wealth, it means that wealth must be moving from one location to the other. Do you agree with me to that point? That's what it means to so transfer wealth. That means we must first ask ourselves that when the Bible teaches wealth transfer, what location does the wealth move from? And what location does it move to? Right? Because if it is not moving, it is not wealth transfer. Do you understand what I'm saying? For it to be wealth transfer, it must move. Because it is relocation, basically. Wealth is moving from one place to another. Now, the other question will be, if you know where it is moving from, and where it is moving to, how does it move? Are you with me? Because for you to understand it, these three questions must be answered. So let's go to the Bible. First of all, where does it move from? And where does it move to? Then secondly, how does it move? Exodus. The first time we see wealth transfer introduced in the Bible, it's in Exodus chapter 12, verse 35. Two verses. Now, or, okay, okay. This is where it happened. I will show you the initiating point. Now, the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they did what? No, you are not with me. Stay with me. Maybe that's why God did the impartation at the beginning. Because I wanted us to pray prayers of breaking limits when I'm ending, but I don't know how it will end now. All right? 
So stay. When it, they did according to the word of Moses and they had what? I want you to say asked. asked. Repeat it. From the Egyptians, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. 36. And the Lord had given the people what? In the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus, they did what? Spoiled or plundered the Egyptians. That word that means that is translated plundered means to strip. It's like stripping a man naked. They stripped the Egyptians. How did this thing happen? So gold, silver, clothing changed location. It moved from the hidden to who? The righteous. Are you here? It moved from Egypt to Israel. So whenever wealth moves, it's not, it's, not, um, it's not within the Christian space, wealth transfer. Wealth transfer is the movement of wealth, material and financial resources, from the hand of the Gentiles to the hand of the believers. That's how it moves. So anything that does not occasion such a movement eh, is, it can be, Prosperity, but it's not wealth transfer. For instance, if I am investing in a business and others that are investing in the business are not only unbelievers and we make money from that business, it is not wealth transfer. Did you hear what I said? For it to be wealth transfer, the originating point must be from the Gentile to the believer. Second thing is, when it is wealth transfer, every wealth transfer that God occasions, every Christian, every believer involved will prosper. The wealth transfer of the Bible is never selective. Did you hear what I said? Every Israelite, every Israelite left Egypt with gold, silver, and what? Clothing. It was not selective. That some got from the investment and some did not get. And we are all Christians. We can't call it what? And this is not my opinion. Are you seeing it in the Bible? Exodus chapter 3, 22. Exodus chapter 3, verse 22. Are you there? But every woman shall do what? Her neighbor, namely, of her who dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and your daughters, and so you shall what? No, next thing I need to tell you, wealth transfer does not involve you laboring in anything. You don't invest into wealth transfer. Bible. You don't build a business into wealth transfer. Bible. How did wealth transfer here? They did what? Asked. Let me establish in scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 10 to 12. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 10 to 12. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which is what your fathers to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you large and beautiful cities which you what? You are not here. Which you what? Eleven. Houses full of all good things which you did not what? Hewn out wells which you did not what? Vineyards and olive trees which you did not what? When you have eaten and are full, verse 12, last verse, 
Then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house. You did not build the house. You did not plant the vineyard. You did not fill the house with goods. What happened? It was transferred. 